Hi guys, Dr. Mo here, and welcome to my channel. If you're returning, welcome back. If you're new, by all means, like, share, and subscribe. Today we're gonna to talk about something that is very prevalent among most people. It is definitely one of those guilty pleasures. We're gonna talk about how to avoid emotional eating, especially during this time of year where people are having all types of celebrations, a lot of invites are going out, a lot of hanging out, social eating and drinking, as well as emotional eating and drinking as well. So we definitely wanna talk about these things so that you'll have these tools available to you as you embark upon all of the festivities of the season. The first thing I would tell you, I am not judging you here at all. I am definitely just providing some tools because again, we all have guilty pleasures. Some people will never emotionally eat, but for those of us that do, we wanna talk about uh, employing these type tools. The very first thing you want to do is you want to always create a food diary. I can tell you creating a food diary is very helpful. You can actually just list out. It's almost like carrying a diary for a workout. When you're working out, there are different products out there, different software solutions that you can actually use to create a food diary. If you're not one that loves to use uh, technology, then you can definitely write these things out. But if you want to be very factual about the different uh, types of foods that you're eating, you can actually use something like MyFitnessPal on the on your tablet or your smart um, device. But you wanna keep that food diary. As you start to documenting what it is that you're eating, you'll start to see that maybe your intake is a bit over the limits. So you can then start making modifications. The second thing you wanna do is reduce your stress. A lot of emotional eating is indicative of stress. So you might want to do something like reducing the stimuli, turning the lights off if you have uh, lights on sometimes and you're stressed before you actually reach out and start eating some chips or eating more food, you may want to try to de-escalate turn the lights off, exhale, take a couple of deep breaths, and you probably will be able to reduce the need or the craving for uh, eating. The other thing you can do is you can do a hunger reality. With the hunger reality, what it is is that you really ask yourself, are you physically hungry or are you really emotionally eating? If you're physically hungry, then definitely try eating some healthier snacks, because it's always good to go healthier. But if you are emotionally eating, then you want to definitely start talking about, well, talking to yourself about why you're eating. You can remedy a lot of those urges by just rationalizing. You know, I just had something to eat. You know, the, this is really out of emotion. I'm not really hungry, but definitely do a hunger reality check. That is really a good way to gauge it. Sometimes you can also rank your, your hunger on a scale of zero, you can say from zero to 10. And anything that's six and below is not worthy of you actually going and eating. Anything seven to nine is you would eat lightly. And if you're 10, then you definitely would eat something, a meal. But definitely do what you think is best for you, but you can rank it, you rank your hunger, hunger or you can actually identify if it's emotional or physical. You can do that first, or, or, or you can incorporate both methods, or you can use one or the other. I personally think you can use one or the other, and you should be fine with identifying the true uh, genesis of your hunger. You wanna also have support. If you know that you're an emotional eater, I know that when I get extremely nervous or stressful, stressed out, I tend to drink a lot of water, and I like to eat. Um, chips. I love popcorn. Popcorn, I can eat popcorn all the time, but popcorn is not healthy and shouldn't be eaten all the time. So again, you definitely want to get the support of friends and have accountability partners. I think that accountability partners should be people that you respect that will tell you something that you, and you not, and you won't become uh, offended because of it. Those are the people that you want to have in your circle and in your support group, because they're going to say, well, hey, you, you may want to back off, like, off of that for a bit. I think it is also important to fight boredom. If you're one of those people that actually get bored all the time, 
then you, I, I think you, it behooves you to actually um, fight that war. You definitely need something else in place instead of eating as a void. I mean, to fill the void. You definitely want to make sure that you find something else to to do something creative or something you can go drawing. I mean, you can draw or you can go skating. Something to distract you so you won't feel that boredom and start and result in uh, emotional eating. And you always want to resist the temptation. Sometimes you have temptation associated with eating. I, I know I have a lot of temptation. I have a lot of temptation when it comes to eating. One of the great things about where I live, I'm very close to all the restaurants and the kitchen is literally right below me. The other, the bad thing about where I live is I'm very close to all the restaurants and a few snack stores and popcorn everywhere. Definitely, I encourage you to build up the strength to fight the temptation because temptation can lead to emotional eating as well. And lastly, I would always, I would tell you to change your triggers. Change how you're actually responding to those triggers. Triggers are those things that actually lead you to the emotional eating. You want to make sure that you identify what your triggers are. And as soon as you identify what your triggers are, you want to change your response to those triggers. So if your trigger, one of your triggers happens to be every time you hear siren outside, you know, that run that puts you in a tailspin, increases your anxiety, and you just start eating, you know, well, that trigger, you need to find a different response other than emotionally eating because your anxiety is up and you hear the, the siren. Um, those are the type of things that you want to do is change the trigger. If you know that your trigger is every time your kids start to bickering and it definitely sends you in a tailspin, and instead of dealing with your children, you just uh, grab some chips or some ice cream, by all means, you want to change those triggers as well. So there you have it, folks, how to avoid emotional eating. It's definitely not easy, but it's definitely attainable. And uh, the other thing, too, is that if you're one of those people that have tried all of these things or most of these things and you feel like you need additional help, by all means, reach out to your local behavioral health specialist um, and I'm sure that they'll be able to assist you. I'm Dr. Mo. I look forward to the next video. I hope this has helped you. Please like and share and subscribe. Thank you until the next video. Bye.